Could you share a memorable failure or setback in your L&D journey and how did you overcome that? I remember back in Australia, many, many years ago when I was working there, we uh, we actually decided to go global. So we just moved from an Australian presence out to a multinational presence, all throughout Asia primarily, but even the Americas as well. And then we were trying to deliver the same training that we did in Australia to everyone around the world. And we failed miserably because... While we did a little bit of focus on language, we didn't fully understand the differences between Australian English, um, where I'm originally from, um, but also the culture of the way that people learn. So we really had to invest in the management teams around the world to make sure that we understood how different people learn, um, but then also take into the, the language considerations as well. When we uh, started Work Academy, we still have been working uh, on our full-time jobs. <laughs> and at some point I said, Enough, because while I'm on my well-paid full-time job, I will not dedicate all my power and resources into Work Academy, so I have to leave uh, the job and go all in. So I left my job, I ordered a bunch of visit cards, and I thought, okay, now I will start going to all the events in Berlin, all the L&D learning, e-learning, whatever, ed tech events, and I will show my face, I will give visit cards, and people get to know Work Academy, people get to know me. And my visit cards cards arrived on the evening before the day when full lockdown started because of no! COVID. <laughs> oh my god and a few years ago i had some uh, career uh, change and uh, back then there was a uh, position in my company in the company i work for um, a position of learning and development specialist so it was like a sparkle for me, uh, you know, a light. Um, and uh, I already be uh, built um, dreams how I'm going to proceed in the role. <laughs> and then um, there was a uh, thunder in the light day. Um, uh, the man my manager told me that I was not um, mature enough to <laughs> proceed. Um, uh, and there was uh, someone more... Uh, more strong uh, candidate so it was a it was a good uh, lesson for me and even though I decided still to proceed and take the um, this experience of applying and uh, what I got uh, in the end first of all I didn't get the role but what I got uh, experience goosebumps uh, during the preparation for the interview and that was a clear sign for me that that's the path I need to follow um, as my career navigation. And after that, I was investing time, effort, resources in developing skills that can help me to become the person within L&D world I want to be. And in both cases, we were really unfortunate that I was about to launch one of the first learning platforms in Denmark. And our provider, she was uh, hosting it out of Singapore. But unfortunately, a fishing boat tore up the internet cable from Singapore to the rest mm -hmm. of the world. And we only had sort of, you could sort of see the bits and the bites dripping through. So it was simply impossible to launch it and do our first test course there. So that's how you were okay come it. Well, there was nothing else to do than wait. Uh, because you were like, you know, you were at the mercy of a fishing boat who tore the internet cable. And then a few years later, I was in Abu Dhabi mm -hmm. and we were in the middle of a training session. Everything was going fine. We had everything up and running and then suddenly it slowed down and nothing worked. And it turned out that once again, the fishing, a fishing boat tore the cable from uh, uh, the Emirates to, to, to the rest of the Asia. And again, we were like sitting there and could do nothing. So I, I, I didn't really overcome it, but mm -hmm. it showed that when you work with technology-based training, you have a couple of things that are simply outside your control. A failure or setback? Yeah. I would say um, the start of the L&D journey, it wasn't really a failure or setback, but it was um, challenging because mm -hmm. I was in Ukraine at that moment and L&D was not the most widespread career that it would go for. So I didn't even know that my job was called instructional design. I think we called it's something else. So I had to learn a lot about instructional design myself. And because I didn't know how it's called, it was really challenging to find any helpful resources. And at some point I stumbled across instructional design as a job and I realized, oh, that's what I do. And that really helped me speed up mm -hmm. in my upskilling and learn the basics of the job. But if you don't know how the job is called, then that's kind of challenging to learn. There's, there's probably so many. And I would just say, look, failure is the but it's very corny to say failure is probably the cure to getting better all the time and, and finding success. I think 
one that probably stands out specifically for me is underestimating the power of a strategic marketing plan for mm -hmm. L&D projects. So when I was much, much younger, probably about 10, 12 years ago, uh, I think I had the wrong mindset of the, you know, you just create a great product or a great project and, you know, people will just use it because the L&D team has spent all this time doing this thing putting it out there. And of course, people are going to use it because why wouldn't they? But that's not how life works. So we really live in an attention economy and needing to understand what, how do you engage people, the ways you can do that? Why does it work that way? What's the psychology around that? Because you can have the best product in the world, but it could hit the graveyard quite quickly mm -hmm. because you've not actually thought through, well, how do I get this to people? How do I connect this with people? So I think for me, that was probably one of the biggest setbacks that not only did I learn from, but it's definitely propelled what I've done over the next decade because I got really clear on why that's important and uh, and how to use it. Yeah, so I think a major setback occurred when I made a transition from being a university professor for seven whole years to a learning experience designer and that to in K-12 segment. So of course I was very, you know, accustomed to teaching huh. adults, but then understanding the needs and preferences of young learners was, was altogether a very different game. So my initial attempts at creating learning experiences for six and nine year olds just, just fell you know, short of expectations. The level of scaffolding particularly was mm -hmm. mismatched due to their developmental stage or learning styles. So this was definitely something I call or I see as a setback. And if you ask me, how did I overcome this? Then honestly speaking, theory didn't help me at all. I simply took two approaches. And one was that I, you know, started sharing my designs with the K-12 experts. And then I also started integrating their feedback on a very, very serious note. And secondly, I used to test out my designs by delivering them to a group of four to five kids just to observe and understand, you know, their learning styles and their mm -hmm. overall reactions to my my design. So oh, we had a rocky rollout with our new LMS a couple of years ago. Um, it was a rushed implementation because we needed to sunset our legacy LMS quickly. Um, that was a tension filled few months because for many of our employees, the previous LMS was the only one they knew. And all of a sudden, they were in a new site, new user interface, and different content. And fortunately, I've got a really good team. They've, they provided and continue to provide a lot of support as we keep adding features and making um, reports and dashboards. So it's been really fun. One of my very first projects when I started working in L&D corporate, in the corporate world, uh, was to... Uh, purchase a learning platform mm -hmm. um, and I would say I started uh, with the one of the biggest failures uh, and I learned it fast but essentially we looked into a lot of different tools uh, we spent months doing this work and only at the end when we had already selected a tool or we had already a preferred tool we went to our um, leaders in the company so this was a very IT you know, strong, you know, uh, company. Um, and we quickly realized that this would never work for them. And I think my main learning from this that helped me overcome was the fact that I should never assume that my customers, aka my learners, actually are aligned in what I believe in. Mm -hmm. um, so from that moment on, I made sure to always be a partner uh, no matter what yes i can uh, it was the time when i became an an lnd manager so i was basically promoted from an individual contributor to an lnd manager and i was promoted because because i was a very good lnd professional uh, not necessarily because i was such a good leader and the first few months um, it, on the role were, were a mess. I've never done that before. I was not naturally a leader. And how I, I overcame that uh, with therapy. And I would say with a lot of 
patience and uh, an open mind.